Hey everybody, it's Mike with Seas Arrows Frontier. Today, I uh, just want to go over uh, one way that uh, you can possibly save some money uh, if you're out hunting and you end up getting a deer. If you don't have 80 to 100 dollars, uh, and some places even charge more than that to get your deer processed, uh, a cheaper, easier way that you can go and actually do it yourself. Um, <clears throat> I know there's a lot of different videos out there. Uh, Bearded Butchers, they got uh, several videos on uh, how to actually cut up your meat and everything else. However, not, of us, not all of us have a nice butcher shop that we can just go to. So, I got my kitchen right here, got my counter space, and I'm just going to do a little bit of prepping and show you what I do here at home. And uh, just make sure your wife's away unless she's... Uh, uh, got a strong stomach for all the, you know, blood and all that stuff. But, <clears throat> no, it's not really that bad. Uh, what, once you get the deer uh, deboned, uh, you're just basically looking at steaks and, you know, cutting up some steaks and then putting them, packaging, packaging them in the freezer paper. Um, there's multiple different ways that you can actually package your meat. And uh, one of the things that I've done more recently is move to... Uh, wrapping it in saran wrap and then put wrapping freezer paper around it so I've, I've, I first experimented with this way and I like this a lot more than what I use the uh, uh, those uh, vacuum sealers and it's a lot more cost efficient when you talk about buying a roll of saran wrap and freezer paper that will do one to two sometimes you can push to even three deer just depending on how uh, conservative you are with cutting your paper and know what you're doing uh, when you actually put your uh, deer meat into these ziploc bags and uh, suck all the air out you know you're, you're, you're sucking all the air out of that portion of the bag but at the same time each one of those bags is, you know, double or even triple the amount of what you would actually just roll saran wrap. And so you can get, you know, $2, $3 roll of saran wrap and then a $2, $3 roll of uh, freezer paper for like pennies on the dollar of what you would be spending when you do the uh, vacuum seal method. So I'm just going to go over a little bit today. Now one thing, um, I'll go ahead and touch in on this video. So this, uh, this deer that I shot uh, has actually been aging for about, uh, let's see, I shot it uh, Saturday. So I shot it last Saturday. We're now at Monday. So um, it's been aging roughly about nine days. I'd like to age my meat anywhere between seven to eight days as long as you've got a controlled environment. I'm going to show you a little bit of that now. So. Okay, so this is just basically a uh, refrigerator I had donated to me. Uh, someone was going to throw it out and I decided to take it. And so it's a controlled environment, but as you can see, I got my bucket of meat right here. And I got two buckets, one inside the other. Uh, pardon the little bit of blood spill back there. But uh, two buckets one inside the other and uh, showed you in the other video that I use one bucket to drain into the other and so the meat is in the top bucket so we're gonna get that out here alright so basically I just cut the meat off the deer as you can see there's different parts in here and uh, you know um, the rump meat is basically all together and uh, you'll notice like around like day seven, day eight, you start to get like a sweet smelling aroma with the meat. And uh, it, it's, it's very um, noticeable between that and actually bad meat. And you'll actually see with like bad meat, if you get, if you get some bad meat, um, it'll start to have like a green tint to it. So you don't want that. And, and I'll tell you, um, from over the years I have had some meat that uh, I didn't get to in time and aging it properly and the meat ended up actually spoiling 
So as you can see here, this is uh, some of the, uh, the rump portions that I cut up. So, and then you can just see that, you know, basically when this is going around, it's wrapped around the deer leg. And I just basically come in and fillet it off the deer leg or the deer bone. So basically these are uh, portions, this is one whole portion of uh, rump roast. What, what I do is, as it's on the bone, is it's, this is wrapped around the uh, bone and then I, and I fillet it off. And so now you have the inside of the meats and you can kind of see how each one of the, uh, the meat groups, so like your ball roast, uh, your steaks, and uh, you know some other small pieces of meat that you know I'll just fillet out the bad parts and then throw it into the bowl for uh, grinding meat to make burger out of and so you can see just I mean after you age the meat um, a lot of the blood is drained out so uh, you just see how it just starts to peel apart you can just take your fingers and just peel apart but uh, we're gonna go through that and I'm gonna show you how I uh, package these portions of meat right here. So, another thing that you wanna make sure that you have is a good sharp knife. Now I use this one, it's more for uh, filleting and so that's basically what we're gonna be doing is using this to uh, separate the, the uh, portions of meat here, the different muscle groups and then as we separate them, we're going to fillet these out and then uh, cut all the silver skin off of it and then uh, get it prepared for uh, packaging. So you got your deer and now you got your meat. You don't have like, you know, a couple hundred to take it to what you would say, it, you know, is a, a processor and uh, somebody that can actually cut up your deer and age it properly. And that's another thing too. It's like not knocking all the, the butcher shops or anything like that. I just prefer to do my meat myself. And I think that, uh, you know, I think I take a little more time with uh, my cuts and filleting off the, uh, the silver skin that's on the meat and, and saving those pieces of meat uh, for the grinder. So that way, you know, you can just get a lot more uh, meat out of your deer uh, versus taking it to like a processor they're not they're going through uh, several deer a day trying to process all those and then they ended up you know cutting off a lot of the the meat that you would probably normally save um, so there's that aspect of it another one is I know there's some not so honest uh, people out there that will actually take portions of uh, your meat harvested and uh, I guess cut off the back straps and then save some for themselves so I you know it's just a couple different things about that that it's just kind of like I prefer to do my own meat and know that I'm getting a quality product that we went out we hunted that that animal and then we're able to process the meat the way that I want it to be processed and then move into actually cutting up that meat in the way that I want it to be cut up and then I know the styles of uh, steak and everything that I prefer to eat with me and my family and then when I'm serving friends. So I'll go into a little bit into that and then just show you a little bit about what we what I do for my process. And you see uh, how you have all these uh, different parts and then basically I'll break them apart and then uh, from there then I'll spend a little more time. So this this was the the big fat piece that was wrapping all those uh, sections of muscle together. And you got each individual piece of meat, each individual muscle that is inside that uh, wrapped in that fat. So when you're coming through try to break down each each individual muscle and uh, that'll determine see this is we use this as a uh, like a roast right here and uh, just get all the bad fat off of there 
and I usually put that aside and you can uh, do different things with that. Uh, lure in coyotes is a good one. Um, uh, another thing that I've seen is uh, you make maggot traps or whatever to feed your chicken. So right now I'm just going to try to get a little bit of the silver skin off and um, just reveal the beautiful color to this this roast right here. Just want to separate, you know, everything off of this meat. That way you can just uh, get all that uh, silver skin off. You can see that. There's another dividing layer right there. You just come in here and lay that out. there that right there so this right here you can still clean it up a little bit but you know you get the overall So this is going to be your ball roast, and then I just basically uh, just try to get a little bit of the silver lining off of it, and then package that up by itself. These are two good pieces of meat that you can make uh, roast out of, or uh, your ball roast, or this is like your leg back strap right here, and all this right here is going to be uh, grinding meat. So for one leg, those are those basically what you're going to look at getting. And there's obviously some other cuts that are in the uh, um, for the front part of the leg, but these are more for the hind quarters. So. Okay, so now we actually got our meat cut up. Now we're going to uh, package it. Um, I'm gonna show you how I do that with saran wrap and freezer paper for the freezer. So I just have like regular uh, saran wrap, plastic wrap. So just gotta stretch a piece out here across the counter. And I wanna make it about at least Two, two feet long, you know, enough to uh, get in here and actually uh, get a good portion of it wrapped around. So we're gonna do the ball roast right here. I just went ahead and cut these two right here into one so I can combine that together, put that all together for one package. Um, so now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is roll this 
all the way around to there it's all covered and then you keep the bottom plastic out and I tuck the top part in around the meat and you know people want to you want to disagree with it you can disagree with it but uh, I've been doing this now for five years this, this way and I've actually had some meat that I've packaged with a saran wrap and the freezer paper for three years got it out and defrosted it and it was just as good so no freezer burn or anything like that and basically what you're doing is when you're wrapping it you're wrapping it tight to the meat so that way it's not allowing any air to get in here or the least amount of air as possible so when, when you wrap it this way and then I'll come back and wrap it long ways as well so you'll see what I'm talking about but then as that other portion part of the meat right here was tucked underneath here now you're gonna come by and tuck the other top part underneath the other side See that on there. Get you a close up here. You're actually tucking these corners in right here. You're leaving this lay on the ground on both sides. So you got that tucked in right there. And then it creates a tightness around here. And you just basically flip it over. Now you got excess on top right here. And then you got the, the stuff on the bottom. So basically you're just gonna take the top, tuck it underneath right there, tuck it underneath right here. Sorry, kind of hard to do with one hand there. And then continue on that down. And then once you're at the end, tuck that underneath and then wrap the end right there. And then I'm going to wrap it again the next way, uh, long ways. already wrapped it this way now I'm going to turn it and wrap it this way so now I got the sides being wrapped on both sides and then I tuck it underneath the same way keep the bottom out tuck that and you're going to wrap the top part around the, the bottom part of the meat so that way it's all nice and tight in there same way and then you're just going to pull the top up. You got both of the sides right here. It creates a vacuum tight seal all the way around that meat. Now that was just basically a couple cents of saran wrap to do that. And then to finish it off, have my freezer paper here so to finish it off I have my freezer paper here put it right on the middle right here and I like to start a little a little more than halfway in tuck those sides in I'm gonna roll this over top and what this does just gives it a little more extra insulation. And roll it over that. Bend the, bend the corners at the top right here. Take the piece of uh, meat. And it's all locked in there. 
I'll take a piece of tape. Now you can do a freezer tape. I just use regular scotch tape. I've never had any issues with it. I don't know, some people say scotch tape uh, or freezer tape is what you need, but uh, I'm all about cheapness. And it holds just as fine. I've never had any issues with it not sticking unless it was wet or something like that but put that on there I'll mark it mark mine with a uh, magic marker Anyways, I hope this helps somebody um, just to save some money and, uh, you know, get out there and try to do it yourself rather than taking it to the processor. Um, it just broadens your uh, experience in actually processing your own meat and then, uh, you know, you take a little more pride in uh, being able to put that on the dinner table for your, you and your family. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Make each day count. And God bless. I got some deer process.